We're here this morning with the United States Senator John Cornyn. Uh, John Cornyn is a frequent publisher on Texas GOP Vote. We appreciate you taking the time to talk to us this morning. Thanks, Bob. Good to be with you. Yeah, it's nice to be here in Austin as you're getting ready to kick off your re-election campaign. Well, it's, uh, I'm looking forward to it. We'll be out uh, Schultz Beer Garden with uh, Governor Perry and uh, starting our, our campaign for re-election. And, um, you know, we've got several folks who are running in the primary. That's uh, what makes our country so great. Uh, each of us have to make the case why we should be elected, and we mm -hmm. will be doing that. But uh, more importantly than just that, I'm going to be doing everything I can to work with Governor Perry, Greg Abbott, and other Republicans to make sure we fight off this effort of battleground Texas to turn Texas blue. I don't think it could happen in 20, 2014, but if we don't uh, pay attention, if we don't fight back, uh, it could happen uh, four or six years in the future. Well, in, in some counties, particularly in Harris County right. and some of the others where the margin is so slim, uh, Wendy Davis bringing out an extra 5% of the youth vote or the women, single women vote could really make a huge difference. So leadership from the top is going to be very important in this election. Well, you make a very important point. Uh, I ran first as a district judge in San Antonio, Bexar County, and what we've seen over time is that the cities like Dallas, San Antonio, certainly Austin, and, and uh, hopefully not you know, Houston, but uh, they're right on the bubble and some of them have gone red like Dallas, just ever so slightly. So you're right, we need to fight not only in the suburban areas and rural Texas, but in the urban areas too, uh, because uh, they're definitely gonna uh, make their gains there and we need to stop them. Absolutely. President Obama has been in the news a lot lately on, <laughs> on this Obamacare issue. Yesterday he came out again and, and is basically what I call legislating from the Oval Office. Yeah. He's taking existing law and just saying, well, we're not gonna do this part, we're not gonna do that yeah. part. What do you think of his his little speech yesterday? Well, it was uh, it was a epic failure, like Obamacare was. And you're right; he can't change the law. He can't reinstate uh, contracts that have already been canceled. Some five million insurance policies that people like have already been canceled thanks to Obamacare. And you know what? He knew it in 2010. Mm -hmm. And the Democrats who voted against the attempt to provide more flexibility for grandfather provisions, they knew it as well. So. Uh, this is really just the tip of the iceberg, but uh, he and, uh, well, he's not so much because he's not running for re-election, but the Democrats who are up for re-election in 2014 are panicked and looking for a way out, and he's trying to provide them cover. Now, what can the Congress do to get him to not be just changing the law at will? He's already made several changes, putting off the uh, large company implementation right. for a year that you know the law doesn't let him do that So right. what can Congress do to uphold his authority? Well, he can't do it. You're right, and uh, he won't be able to do it uh, I think you know, it's amazing how he comes out and wants to say with the wave of the wand He's going to change existing contracts and the law that's been implemented over three and a half years Just because finally just finally because he's begun to be held accountable for it uh, so I think uh, he won't be able to change that. Uh, he may be able to persuade some insurance companies to try to reinstate some contracts. But as I said, this is just the beginning of the problems of the implementation of Obamacare, from cancellations to sticker shock to just, uh, I mean, the, the website is the least of the problems. Once they get the website fixed, and they will eventually, mm -hmm. then people are going to really find out the flaws in Obamacare that are, not, that are part of the features of Obamacare. In other words, that's the way it was designed. Let's talk about the rhino in the room. Uh, it's, a word, it's, a word, it's a word I don't really like. Uh, you know, it, it's been so abused by uh -huh. people. If you find one little thing that you disagree with somebody on, no matter how conservative their record is, they're a rhino. You know, they need to be eliminated uh -huh. from the face of the earth. But, <laughs> but seriously, the the uh, the difference in the debate over defunding Obamacare uh -huh. between you and Senator Cruz. Um, in World War II, General Montgomery and General Patton had very different ideas of what tactics and strategies she should be used to win the war. But both of them wanted Hitler eliminated. They wanted the, the, end, the war to end right. and they wanted to stop that. Is that what's going on here? Is there just a difference of opinion in tactics and strategy or is there a philosophical difference? What, well, there's, what no, is this issue? there's no philosophical difference. Uh, I've been opposed to Obamacare from the beginning and I voted like, for every attempt to dismantle it, repeal it, delay it, defund it. Uh, this is merely a difference in the family on tactics. How do you accomplish that goal that we all share in common? But you raise a very important point. I think the, the problem that we have to get beyond is name-calling. Uh, 
and divisions within the conservative cause. Uh, I read an interview the other day uh, Peggy Noonan did with James Baker who asked, what would Ronald Reagan do with the Tea Party? He said, he said he would be right out front leading, leading the charge. Mm -hmm. And what we need to do is channel all of this energy and enthusiasm that the Tea Party has given the conservative cause, and in many ways sort of reminded us of our roots and held us accountable for some of the mistakes that have been made along the way. Because only when we're unified will we be able to win elections in November, and will we be able to then save the country. That's our goal, and that to me cries out for uh, unity, not division. You know, it's interesting, if Ronald Reagan was running for office today, I think some people in the Tea Party would call him a rhino. And yeah, you know, I'm not sure what call, the name calling is really yeah. particularly constructive. I'm with you on that. Yeah, I, I think that's that. <laughs> you know, clearly you have a, a conservative issue. There's their record. There's mm -hmm. places where I've disagreed with you in the past. But My wife doesn't agree with me all the time. Believe it or not, it's shocking. Yeah, I, I don't even <laughs> agree with myself all the time. So, <laughs> you know, that, that's... Uh, that, but the, the key is we've got an important battle here in Texas and, and from the top down in this ticket, we have got to focus on, on uh, winning the battle and working as a team to, uh, to stop the, the blue wave from coming in. Couldn't, couldn't agree more. Yeah. So um, you know, back onto Obamacare, where are we now in this process? What, what will Congress do from here forward and what can the House do and what will the Senate do? I know your, your hands are pretty tied in the Senate. Well, you know, I think um, there are some who said just get out of the way mm -hmm. and let this thing collapse, which it will. Mm -hmm. um, I would say that's fine because we all believe we need to scrap Obamacare and then replace it with some things that make a lot more sense, that don't interfere with the doctor-patient relationship, that will actually bring down the cost and make health care more affordable to more people. That's, Obamacare does none, does none of those things. Uh, but it's, so at some point we need to wait, I think, for the Democrats to come to us and say, you know what, we were big cheerleaders for this, but it's not working. And it may not be that they will do that. Uh, I think the, the, the vote today in the House is maybe the start of that. Mm -hmm. But not even that's going to fix all the flaws in Obamacare because it's really baked in the cake. I mean, this thing was designed the way it's actually working, but the president and his allies just misrepresented it. Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of people believed it. So this is what we have to do, I think, to, to sort of get out of the way and let the flaws be exposed, let people be held accountable for who misled the American people. But at some point, we've got to find a way to protect people from the hardship uh, associated with this epic failure of this experiment in big government. Okay. I'd like to take a break and then come back and talk to you about a couple other very important issues, and um, those being the Fast and Furious and, and border security issues. Absolutely. So, well, we want to thank you for your time here this morning, and, Thanks, and we'll drill down to that a little bit later. Good.